<laughs> I didn't see it for a second. Welcome back to the kitchen. We're about to hook it up. Today's menu item, crawfish pie. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Y'all stick around. I'm about to knock this out. Paya! We heating up in here. But first, at our prepping station, we're gonna chop some vegetables. So we got two sticks of celery, two yellow onions, four cloves of garlic, and one green bell pepper. Let's put the paya on that. Choo! Paya! And I guess that's why they call it paya. <laughs> Let's go. All right, guys, in our large pot over here, we are going to get started on a roux. First, start off with a stick of butter. Woo, get that melted. Next, you wanna add one half cup all-purpose flour and get stirring. So as some of you might have noticed, sometimes I make a roux with vegetable oil or canola oil, and sometimes I make it with butter. It just kind of depends on what the dish is. For most of my stews and gumbos, I always go with oil and flour. Now for something like this, where I know I will be using heavy cream, I go with butter. All right, so while we got this going on, we're gonna go ahead and add some olive oil to our hot pan over here and get our vegetables searing. Hiya! Woohoo! We cooking now, boy! Let me get that stirred around. So we're gonna keep our fire kind of low just because we gotta go back and forth between these vegetables and this roux. Very important. We don't want to burn our roux. So we're looking to get this roux to maybe a peanut butter color, caramel looking color. We don't have to get it very dark for a crawfish pie. Peanut butter color or caramel looking color, that'll work. At this time, go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Still stirring our vegetables here. We're going back and forth between that pot and this pan. And uh, we're probably going to saute these vegetables down for a good 20 minutes before we move on to our next step. I like to get my vegetables nice and soft. It just gives your crawfish pie a really good consistency. Oh, yeah, guys. We got us a nice tan color going here. So, in the meantime, our vegetables, they have been sauteing for about 20 minutes. They're getting nice and soft. We're going to go ahead and add a drained 10-ounce can of mild Rotel tomatoes. Go ahead and stir that in. And we're probably gonna let this cook for another five minutes right here. All right, this roux is getting close, guys. So for now, our vegetables are nice and soft. We're gonna go ahead and add one cup of chicken broth to these vegetables. Stir that in there real good. So, this is about the color we want to get our roux. We're going to go ahead and take this mixture over here, and we're going to dump it into this roux. Here we go. Go ahead and scrape the rest of that in there. Now, if it's bubbling up a lot, turn your fire to the lowest setting. You don't want nothing to burn. All right, now that we got that stirred in nice, we're gonna go ahead and add half a pint of heavy cream. Mix that in there nice. Now this time, it's probably safe to go ahead and raise our heat a little bit. Once it's thickened up really nice, you can go ahead and lower your fire back to simmer. Now we're going to go ahead and season this mixture. One tablespoon of your favorite Cajun Creole seasoning. Mix that in. One teaspoon of pepper. A tablespoon of parsley flakes. 
and a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Mix that well. So, mine's gonna have a lot of flavor. I'm using crawfish from a leftover crawfish boil. If you're using crawfish from a leftover boil, you may wanna tone some of these flavors down. If not, if you're using the frozen packs, this will work just fine. Furthermore, if you really wanna kick it up, just add you some more seasoning. <laughs> All right, gonna go ahead and add our crawfish in. I've got roughly two pounds left over from a boil, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. Mix it in good. All right, once you got your crawfish in, go ahead and turn your fires off. And then for our last step here, we're gonna add one fourth cup of whole milk. Mix that in really good. That'll cool it down a little bit and also give us a really good consistency, perfect for our pies. All right, guys, time to fill up our pies. I got two nine inch pie crusts. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up this one spoonful at a time in each pie crust. Furthermore, these are the deep dish pie crust. I like a good thick layer of pie with my filling. Let's get crack a lacking. Spoonful here. And a spoonful here. And just keep repeating. Beautiful. So we're just gonna go ahead and smooth these out real good. And then we'll be prepped to go. So these were frozen pie crusts, but I went ahead and moved them to the fridge just before I started cooking. That way they had enough time to kind of defrost and soften a little bit. All right, these look good. So for one final touch, just to give it a little bit of color, I douse a little bit of paprika over the tops of these pies. It kind of gives it a nice little touch on the top. Don't worry about paprika. It doesn't really have much flavor. Perfect. Now you don't have to do that, but for me, it kind of gives it a little bit of Cajun flair. Paya! All right, guys, I've lined up a baking sheet with some foil here. Put these bad boys on the top. That way, if anything does happen to boil up or topple over, it'll go right onto this baking sheet. Now let's get crack a -lacking. There we go. So we're gonna cook these bad boys for one hour or until that crust has that light golden color. Let's take a look at this. Woo -hoo -hoo! Oh my goodness. Look at that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is crawfish pies. So let these cool for about 15 minutes. Cutting into them might not be the prettiest thing, but the taste is going to be divine. Well, that's a wrap, y'all. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all stay tuned for more. Paya! All right, guys. So I want to show y'all a little something here with this pie. It's a little tricky. You're not going to be able to cut perfect pieces with a crawfish pie like this. However, here's a little trick to get that first slice. First, you want to find an area where you can really see the silver lining of the pie. You're going to get to the center of the pie. Go ahead and cut your little triangle piece here. And go ahead and do both sides. All right, next, you're going to take some scissors and cut the pie in those areas where you cut. There you go. So now you just want to kind of pull that area down a little bit. So that way you can get underneath the pie. There you go. Get underneath there real good. And there is your first slice of crawfish pie. And get some of this other little dripping down here. Put that on your plate too. Some laying yet. Chooey! <laughs> and that right there, you knocked that out. Woo! Now look, this ain't all I'm eating. 
But y'all like to see me dive in, so I'm going to knock it out. Mm. It just has this melty goodness that only one who tries it would know. Y'all make this. It's good stuff. All right, now get out of here. I'm tired of you. Payah!